welcome to Millennium Live. My name is Katie. I'm joined today by Larry Goldman, who is the president of Amberleaf. Hi, Larry. How you doing? Good. Thanks so much for joining us. Before we jump in, can you just give us a little background on Amberleaf? Yeah, sure. You bet. So Amberleaf uh, specializes in uh, the customer experience. And, and, and really what that means to us and to our clients is that we're helping people implement customer service, marketing, and sales technology. Um, and, and probably as, as kind of a horizontal across that, you know, we don't believe that those applications work correctly, you know, without a solid data architecture and data management of their customer information to, to really reap the benefits of those applications and those business processes. So how do you define the customer experience and customer experience op optimization? So when we look at the customer experience, we look at, at it broadly. You know, a lot of people, and, and when we go to conferences and when we see webinars, people talk about the customer experiences as, you know, the contact center or customer support. We look at it at every touch point that the customer has. So from website to mobile, definitely customer service included. If you have a sales organization, that counts as part of the customer experience. If you have a pre-sales organization, if you have a customer success organization, and of course marketing is consistently touching the customer with communications, offers, and messages as well. So when we say we're trying to optimize the customer experience, we're trying to make sure that all of those functions, all those business processes are communicating effectively and relevantly. So then what would you say some challenges are for businesses who are trying to optimize their customer experience? Well, you know, the one we hear about the most is, is making sure that the information is in the right place at the right time. You, know, you hear about marketing to the right person at the right time all the time. That's a, that's a standard cliche. And we agree with it. We don't disagree with it. However, there is no right marketing without the right information. And that's why I talk about data management is to personalize the website, to present the right offer on the mobile phone. Uh, we need to understand uh, customer wants, customer needs, customer preferences, and historical background and behavior. What have they shown interest in in the past? What do they like? Are they price sensitive? Are they convenience sensitive? Once we understand that, we can then communicate effectively. When our clients look at their systems architecture, a lot of times they're thinking, you know, wow, our information is all over the place. How are we going to fix this? And a lot of times that becomes, you know, a big challenge. So would you say that these challenges change from business to business models? You, you know, they do. Uh, you know, a business consumer model sometimes looks more simple on the front end, but on the back end, they're dealing with huge scale. You know, you might look at Coca-Cola as selling, you know, cans of, well, I'm from Chicago, so I call it pop. So cans of pop, you know, but, um, and that sounds really simple. We're just selling soda. You know, how hard can it be? Well, we're selling it, you know, to the tune of, you know, half a billion people a day, you know, and now that's complicated. That's who would say that's not complicated. And then you look at business to business, you know, if, if you're selling to a business with a multi-layered decision structure, uh, when you're selling to a business who's making a committee decision, you're not just trying to understand the customer's preferences. You're looking at 10 people all at once with conflicting preferences. Right. So it does change business to business. And there's a different approach and a different set of systems and a definitely a different marketing strategy when, when you look at different business models. So you say marketing strategy. What is marketing's role in generating a unique customer experience? You know, and, and that differs from client to client as well. You know, it's exciting that we're starting to see titles of companies like chief customer officer or chief experience officer, because I think that makes it a little more clear. I would say in consumer organizations, um, Marketing is driving the customer experience. They're driving it, even those with customer support centers, customer contact centers. I would say marketing is the one who's leading with the message, who's leading with the analytics, and who's advising everybody else working with the customer on what they probably need and what they probably want. And they're probably supplying the technology as well. 
You know, in business to business, you're probably looking at marketing and sales, uh, holding hands and doing it together. You know, you and me, we're in this together. And, and uh, marketing is generating leads, marketing is generating a brand, and, and, and sales is executing. And, and that becomes, and that's another reason why things do change business model by business model. But um, we believe that marketing has the skill sets, that marketing has the scope and the technology to really drive that personalized, relevant experience across any model. You mentioned technology. So what technologies are supporting these challenges right now? You know, it's, it's a wide variety. It's a wide variety. I mean, you know, at its heart, you know, it's easy to say Salesforce automation, customer service automation, marketing automation. That's really simple to say. But when you piece those apart, now you're talking about chat. You're talking about customer service portals. You're talking about knowledge bases. You're talking uh, about lead management. You're talking about dynamic content and personalization technologies, campaign management, uh, text messaging and mobile notification. So though it would be great if one vendor created all of this and some are trying um, to really create the customer experience correctly, inevitably you'll have some sort of best of breed strategy. And that's again why data management and data integration becomes so important. Right. So how are these customer experience technologies used across customer facing systems? Well, we, we see it in, in a variety of ways. And again, this is why marketing is really well suited to drive a lot of the customer experience. You know, one of the few things, you know, obviously customer service is automating the customer service process and sales is, is driving the sales process. But marketing has an opportunity to drive analytics, insight, and then again, the personalization across all of these technologies. So when somebody calls in now, of course, a customer service request could be a, uh, you could be filled with a lot of friction, right? We're not always calling our cable company in a good mood. You know, not, right. that's, not always, that's not the time to start cross-selling a bunch of stuff. Right. But in the case that you're calling customer service and you're having a routine discussion, there are opportunities for cross-sell, for upsell. Here's stuff you didn't know about our company. When you're talking to a sales rep, the sales rep may or may not have had time to do the analytics or the research, even if he's had that customer for years. That analytics and that research is a great place to come from marketing. And here are three or four ideas on what these people probably want to buy from you. And that's a great way to introduce sales to data, to analytics, without them having to deal with data or analytics because they don't want it. Right. So would you say that organ organizations in the middle market face different challenges with customer experience technologies rather than larger enterprise companies? You know, it's interesting. I, I do get that question quite often. You know, we have a lot of extraordinarily large clients with very simple businesses. And we have extremely small companies as clients with extremely complicated business. You know, I have, I have clients that are $40 million in revenue with 20 million customers, you know, as crazy as that sounds, you know, they're probably giving away some freeware or something, but they've got all these users and they've got all these customers. So really the middle market needs to scale. The middle market needs the complexity uh, and a lot of what we're offering the middle market is Fortune 500 technology at a different price point and a different complexity point, but all the same functionality and all the same scalability uh, that everyone needs. And I think that's, that's an alluring alternative. Absolutely. So how do organizations avoid technology hype to ensure they're focused on value added initiatives? Well, it, it isn't easy. It isn't easy. Uh, every time there's a hype, every time there's a new acronym, every time, you know, some new technology comes out, the market is flooded with new vendors. Uh, the analysts are saying good things about everyone. Everybody's got the answer. Uh, and so you do have to do your due, due diligence. And really, at the end of the day, we advise people, be a business person. You know what your business needs. Don't try to be a technologist when you're not a technologist. Vendors can either show you the answer, they can get you a reference with the answer where they've done it before, or they haven't. 
And, and, and that's really where you as a business person know what's important to you and you're either seeing it or hearing about it or you're not. And, and, and when you're not hearing about it, that's just pure hype and PowerPoint. Okay. Well, Larry, thank you so much for joining us today. It was lovely to have you here and we hope to see you again in the future. I uh, hope to see you again and we hope to see some baseball in the future too. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.